Good afternoon, everyone. I want to welcome you to the uh, Future of Work and Human and Civic Engagement uh, discussion, a conversation with industry. Uh, my name is Dan Montplaisier. I'm the Vice President for University Advancement at Cal Poly Pomona. Uh, and before we begin today, just a couple uh, housekeeping items uh, for those of you that are now becoming Zoom experts as well. And so we will have uh, everybody will be muted um, so that the, we don't avoid background noise. And then we'll have the chat function will be open uh, and available for people to ask questions. Uh, we'll be monitoring uh, this and then organizing questions uh, towards the end of the session for a question and answer period. And so I'd like to thank all of our students who have joined the discussion today uh, about the future of work. Uh, this is an investment in yourself. And uh, Cal Poly Pomona has taken a very strong interest in this topic. And we have a number of special guests that have joined us today to help share their insights. But before we do that, I have the pleasure of introducing Cal Poly Pomona's president, Dr. Soraya Coley, who will share more about why this conversation is so important. So please welcome President Soraya Coley. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dan. And thank you all for uh, joining us. Uh, I first and foremost want to recognize our panelists who have taken time from their busy schedules to address a core issue for college students. I hope you're all staying healthy and safe. I can't say how much I miss the bustle of campus life, but it is so important that we continue to listen to public health officials, wash our hands, wear a mask, and practice social distancing. Today's discussion is part of a coordinated campus-wide effort focused on helping our students, helping you, to achieve a lifetime of success. Two years ago, we launched the Cal Poly Pomona Future of Work and Human and Civic Engagement Initiative. This project is aimed at cataloging, creating, and promoting the activities and programs that will prepare our students for the workforce today and for years to come. It includes an emphasis on opportunities to be leaders in their communities. This initiative is focused on everything from general education requirements to the role of our career center and more. One central piece of the initiative is engagement with industry leaders to help us better understand workplace trends and how to prepare students for a range of professional and community opportunities which of course brings us to today's conversation. Today's panel is made up of innovative leaders who see firsthand what our graduates need. And as we better understand how to support our students, Cal Poly Pomona is the perfect institution to make the most of and to share this knowledge. Cal Poly Pomona has a unique commitment to learning by doing multidisciplinary perspectives and professional readiness. This approach teamed with our institution-wide commitment to diversity, inclusion, and expanding opportunity for all has made us one of the most effective engines for social mobility in the country. We call it the polytechnic advantage and we're adding to that advantage today. Thank you again for joining us and thank you to our panelists. I'm now pleased to introduce our moderator, Clark Rucker, a distinguished alumnus, a director at the Boeing Corporation and a true champion for Cal Poly Pomona. Clark. Thank you, President Coley. Uh, wow, I am so pleased to be with you and uh, certainly uh, all of our, our industry guests and panel uh, and our students today. Um, you know, some of the uh, some of the students that are on this call, uh, I've seen them and talked to them in person before. Hey, I'm going to encourage you guys turn your cameras on so we can see you. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of professionals on this call that want to get to know you and, uh, and and have some discussions with you. So, you know, I, I, I looked through the, uh, the 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 line and I saw that there were a lot of cameras off people not wanting to show their faces. And I guess uh, all, all I'll say is that works to your disadvantage. So you might want to think about turning those cameras on. You don't, I like to to you don't have to worry about if the house is clean or not. Just turn the camera on. We don't care. Exactly. Exactly. Hey, so uh, let's see. Before we meet our panel, I want to thank Cal Poly for hosting this event. I, I think it's very important. 
uh, as an alumni from Cal Poly uh, who graduated back when uh, there wasn't much but dirt on that campus, uh, I, I definitely could say that I benefited greatly from uh, getting my degree at Cal Poly Pomona. Uh, and I'm really excited to see us focus on this topic, um, future of work. Uh, we had a great executive session, lively industry professional chat this morning about the future of work. Uh, and, and, I, and I think that it's, it's going to be even better this afternoon as we get into some discussions with uh, each of you. Uh, we live in a very challenging time right now. And of course, it's a very promising time. Uh, what we're gonna talk about today can really help the students, uh, each of you prepare for not only a rewarding career, but also a rewarding life. And that, that's really the focus is how are you spending the rest of your life? Um, so, with that said, uh, I'd like to now move to our panel. And what I will do is I'll call on you individually and ask you to introduce yourself, uh, your name, your role, uh, your company that you're with, and how you are connected to Cal Poly Pomona. Uh, I'd like to start now with uh, Diane, uh, Diane Miller from Northrop Grumman. Hi, thank you so much, Clark. And thank all of you for joining us today. I'm Diane Miller. Um, I am the Director of Technical Talent Strategy for Northrop Grumman. I just uh, landed that role a few months ago after being leader of our global cyber education and workforce initiatives. And my connection with Cal Poly Pomona is that I graduated about 100 years ago in computer information systems. And I'm currently serving on the Board of Directors of the Cal Poly Pomona Philanthropic Foundation. Excellent, thank you, Diane. Brett, uh, Brett Berglund. Yeah, hi there. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Brett Berglund, uh, I work for Cisco Corporation. I'm the region president for the Los Angeles region, which uh, uh, covers about from uh, the Cal Poly Pomona campus up to the uh, San Luis Obispo campus. And uh, my connection uh, honestly is, um, um, you know, we're a local, employer. We're a national or global employer, but certainly work closely uh, with the uh, campus uh, and done a lot of work with the Collins College uh, specifically and uh, glad to be here today. Thank you, Brett. Appreciate you being here also. Uh, Julia Huang. Hi, um, my name is Julia Huang and I am the president founder of an advertising agency uh, located in Long Beach. We're a multicultural advertising agency. And currently, I would think that we are the largest uh, Asian American female owned uh, advertising and marketing communication firm in the United States. My um, connection to Cal Poly is that I love Cal Poly, and that's the <laughs> common thread, of course. But um, also, uh, Dean um, Iris Levine and a professor in sociology, Mary Udanico. Uh, for some reason reached out. So I have had the honor and pleasure of um, being associated with the school and uh, speaking and lecturing in some of the classes. So that's my connection with Cal Poly Pomona. Thank you so much, Julia, appreciate that. Bob Weiss. Thank you. Uh, I uh, am Really happy to be here and thankful to uh, President Coley for the vision of setting this up and everyone who's supporting it. And uh, when Diane Miller said she would graduated 100 years ago, I can only tell you that I graduated before her. So <laughs> you can put the math together. But I'm, I'm a, a, a huge benefactor of Cal Poly because Cal Poly not only taught me uh, many skills to make me a professional, but taught me just how to think and how to approach the professional world. So I'm very excited to be here and very excited to be part of this discussion. Thank you, Bob. Really appreciate you being here also. And last but not least, rounding out our uh, panel, Sharon Duncan. Hello, everyone. I am delighted to be here, although I have to admit it would be a lot more fun if we were all in person and I could see your faces and we could have your questions and your answers together. Um, but as President Cooley said, we've got to do it safely and um, get through this pandemic together. 
My name is Sharon Tompkins and I'm the Vice President of Sustainability for Sempra Energy down here in San Diego. One of our operating companies is Southern California Gas Company and I was um, until April uh, a Vice President there of uh, Environmental Policy and Chief Environmental Officer. My connection to Pomona is, well, right now it's my weekend house uh, I, as I relocated during the week down here in San Diego. But I've lived in Pomona for um, the last uh, 15, 16 years and love the community and Cal Poly Pomona is such an amazing part of that community. And as I've gotten to know more and more about the university, I become more and more impressed at both the students um, that are there, but also just uh, the rigor and um, real uh, success of the, of the university itself. So that's my connection. Thank you so much, Sharon. Appreciate you being here as well. All right, well, let's see. So obviously we've got the right group uh, in the room for this discussion today. Um, thank, you, thank you to everyone for the, uh, for the thoughts. Uh, it's great to hear about the backgrounds that everyone has. And of course, uh, and love and support for Cal Poly Pomona. Uh, we've obviously got the right group, so so let's get into the into the question and answer session if we can. Dan, am I okay? Am I doing all right on time? Yep, doing great. All set. Thanks. All right, great. So let's see. First question. This is a uh, this is a group question, so any of our panel members can uh, feel free to chime in. Uh, we increasingly see the impact of digital transformation and automation on industry. And now the challenges and opportunities of remote and virtual work. In a few words, how can students prepare and successfully take advantage of uh, these changes that we're seeing? Uh, each person on the panel, you, you're given two minutes. Uh, feel free to uh, chime in at will. And I'm not going to call names, just chime in. This is Diane Miller. Um, I think what's really important is for all students to uh, develop your digital literacy, regardless of what your major might be, um, because you'll need to feel comfortable in how you effectively communicate and collaborate and work in teams over platforms like Zoom or other team building collaboration types of environments. Work will continue, it will be a little different, but how you prepare for that career and your comfort in that type of environment is going to serve you very well for a long time. Thank you, Diane. I suspect most of you are more comfortable in the digital space than perhaps the panelists here where we were used to working uh, in, in, in meetings together and the thought of uh, working remotely, especially at the beginnings of our career were probably unheard of. And I think what we've all recognized over the last several, several months is that um, there is an effective way to work digitally and that that probably will continue to happen. What I would say to you is that it becomes all the more important to be engaged and to uh, be strong in your communication skills and your interactions because it is more difficult in this remote uh, environment to collaborate and to communicate. And those are really important skills, uh, no matter what, whether you're in the digital or um, a virtual world or you're in a, a room and a meeting. Great, great input feedback. Yeah. Go uh, ahead. I, uh, thank you, Clark. I was just gonna say, you know, you're all digital natives. You've never lived in a world where you didn't have a computer or where something digital wasn't in your face. Uh, so you're different than most of us on this panel. Um, and you will you adapt quickly to this, and and even your um, even your group uh, uh, video game you know communities are are teaching you how to work in groups, how to how to work in a digital space. So I think the the challenge will be in a world where 
a company like ours, Disney, let's say, can reach out anywhere in the world um, at a moment's notice, how do you differentiate yourself? It won't be because you are a digital native, because everyone will be a di digital native, but because of your talent, your um, ability to speak, your ability to write and put, put um, a storyline together, make a presentation, those things don't change. So, so um, focus on those fundamentals. And the great thing is you already have the advantage in that you're far more digital than any previous generation. Great input feedback. Thank you, Bob. Brett? Yeah. Yeah, I, I was just, you know, I think it's, it's been covered right there. Uh, um, you know, the, the digital state that we're in, um, you know, it's here to stay and it will evolve back and forth. At some point we will have some level of, of in-person work um, taking place. And I think to, to kind of tag on to the prior comments, um, one of the ways that people can uh, differentiate themselves through uh, whether it's in person or digitally is by actively listening. And I think it's been really challenging in this environment. I know it has been for me. Um, it's easy to get distracted when you're not uh, present in front of a large room. The reality is we are present in front of a large room right now. So how you actively listen so that you can um, uh, listen with the intent to, to learn and not to just say what you want to say next. So I think that's a great way to differentiate yourself. Great point. Great point. Julia? Yes. Um, well, first of all, I, I really would like to express my sympathy to this group uh, because of the, the challenging environment that you're facing and the requirement of resilience, patience, and agility that are required is far more than uh, what was required when I started in business. But my, I also want to express my envy because it's such a such an exciting time and such a such a such a time of so many opportunities. So um, as I piggyback on all the the prior comments that were made uh, regarding uh, uh, technology is that do do take event do take full advantage of the platform that is available to you but also thoughtfully understand the pitfalls of the the convenience of the the, the digital and the convenient platform that is allowed you i do i do a lot of times have the opportunity to be asked a question in terms of what does, it, what does it take? What does it take to be successful? How, what does it take to get a job? I always tell people, be lucky. Uh, be very, very lucky because you know it's not a very fair world that we live in. So it's very important for you to be lucky. But most importantly, don't squander your luck because when, when you know, don't, don't really understand that, that there are a lot of fortunate lucks that you could pick up but please don't squander your luck. So that's uh, my spiel. Thank you, Julia. You know, so, so kind of reflecting on the things that, uh, that we heard during this discussion, and I'm hoping that all you students that are out there are taking notes. Um, these, are, these, are, these are jewels, these are gems that uh, uh, at one point in time, at some point in time in your career, you're gonna look back and you're gonna say, oh yeah, I, I remember what Brett said, or I remember what, Julia said about, you know, uh, you're, you're lucky and don't, and don't squander that luck, you know, and, or, or the comment that, uh, that uh, Sharon made about being an active and a good communicator, you know, and being able to communicate effectively and uh, being an active listener, like uh, Brett stated, you know, these are all, these are all gyms. Um, it's, it's, it's not just in a virtual environment. It's not just, you know, on the web or on Zoom. But it's it's actually when you're face to face with people, same thing. You know, when we get back to uh, some resemblance of a real world and we are all face to face again, all these same skills, all these same things that you're hearing on this call and this discussion, are tools and, and skills and knowledge areas that you're going to need. So uh, so be be well aware of that. The only thing I would add to uh, what you've already heard, and 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 earlier uh, we had an executive panel session where we talked. Um, is that that ability to communicate, you've got to be able to communicate your thoughts very clearly. You've got to be able to, to uh, identify and specify what it is you're trying to share with someone 
in a clear and concise way uh, and, and, and try and think of yourself as, a, as a, think, a systems thinker. In other words, being able to connect all the dots of your thought and the thought process so that when they are received by whoever you're communicating with, be it and, and via whatever mechanism or tool, be it virtual or not, be able to, to be clear and concise with them and let them know that you've actually thought that thought out and you've thought it pretty through uh, thoroughly, uh, pretty through, so uh, through well. So um, with that said, let's, uh, I wanna thank the, the panel, the entire panel for their thoughts and uh, feedback on that. I'd like to uh, now turn to our human and civic engagement question. And we're gonna have uh, two of our panelists talk on this particular subject. Uh, Sharon and Julia, you'll be talking on this one. So, uh, and then others of, of course on our panel can add in and uh, contribute as you like. Here's the question. Why should students care about the quality of our human and civic engagement and how can their career and life benefit by taking them both very seriously? Sharon, Susan, whoever would like to start. I'm sorry, Sharon and Julia, who would ever like to start. Uh, I'm happy to start. Um, you can't divorce what you do in the job with the community or the civic duty as associated with it. And in the conversation we had earlier today, one of the things that I get to think about and look at is in the sustainability world, corporations are thinking more purposefully on how they provide long-term sustainable value across stakeholders. And that's really means that it's more than just making money, it's making sure that we are creating communities that thrive, we're creating employees that thrive, um, that we're being sustainable in our environmental footprint. And that, me, that to me is a really exciting opportunity that we are, and, and I think the other is that we are socially engaged and we're socially thoughtful on what's happening in the world. And I would encourage all of you to think broadly about uh, what is what is the purpose, what is the purpose of the job and what do you wanna do? And I would also challenge you to be open to ideas to be open to disagreement, to be willing to engage in those discussions that are hard. One of the coolest parts of college from my perspective was the conversations that we would have uh, over drinks or uh, during you know, lunch on campus and really explore what we thought and how we thought about that. Don't stop doing that. And I think one of the fears I have in the digital age is that the social platforms, we engage more and more with people who think like we do. And we don't realize that there are lots of different ways to think and lots of different views. And the more we explore and have conversations and are open to ideas and learning that we will be able to be more effective both in our job and in creating thriving uh, communities and uh, people in general. Thank you, Sharon. Julia? So um, I think in adding to what Sharon is saying is that uh, civic engagement and engaging with the community is an investment that you're making for the world that you're going to be living in. And it is your responsibility. And I, I really think I can't, I can't say how, how important it is for you to make this investment now and accumulate that investment so that it becomes a better world. I know that it might sound very idealistically. And I know that in school, especially at this stage, a lot of the things that you're working on is vocational in terms of what is going to be the next, you know, next job that I get. What is the 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 the, the how, how much money am I going to 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 earn? But I, I the the previous at the previous conversation we had this conversation 
And I feel so optimistic about the kind of um, engagement, the civic engagement that I am seeing at your level, at your generation. I, I, I feel like you guys are doing, starting to do so much. And then going back to the previous conversation that we had, utilizing the digital platform in terms of being active in this um, engagement. So, um, you know, to just to be oversimplifying about this is that every single community outreach and the civic engagement that, that you're, you're doing is an investment for your future. And why wouldn't you do that? So. Thank you so much, Julia. Hey, the great comments from both of you. I really appreciate that. I, I would just like to add uh, or ask uh, Bob, um, if, if you could, Bob, just chime in a little bit about bringing your brand. Uh, I think that's such an important message that you gave us this morning on our discussion. Can, can you can yeah, you do that? Uh, yeah, Clark, thank you. When I think about uh, all of you, I, I, I'm a firm believer in this idea that everyone in the world is unique and that you are an individual with unique talents uh, unlike any other talent and think about what your brand is going to build and it's going to build over time it's going to build over you know whichever companies or company you work with and the work that you do but where do you want to be and what are your distinct talents which i think are the things that comprise your brand and be proud of that keep track of that be able to pitch that um, be in a position to um, tell your story and what drives you. I'd, I'd, I'd say, um, Clark, that any, any of us on this panel, the work is difficult, it takes a lot of dedication, takes a lot of hours, takes a lot of work. So it has to be worth it. It has to be worth it in terms of, you know, your life and, and what you want to do with yourself. So really think about that in terms of your own identity and your own brand. And, um, this is a this is a world uh, where you probably have more opportunity than ever because we're all connected globally. Uh, you really have the opportunity to collaborate with people that don't live anywhere near you, never have, uh, and build your own identity. So I think it's I think that's really critical. Excellent, thank you, Bob. Anyone else on the panel want to contribute before we move to our next question? I'd like to um, leverage off of what Bob said in terms of your own brand is find what you're passionate about. You know, maybe it's, uh, you know, cleaning up parks or, or maybe it's mentoring at the local elementary school or whatever it might be. Find what you're passionate about and find an organization that is built on culture and values that kind of synchronized with your own values. And that will make it just a much more rewarding place to work because you'll have fun at your job and with the people that you work with because it's in sync with who you are and what's important to you as an individual. Absolutely. I always say uh, uh, if, you, if you're passionate about your job or your career, you'll never work a day in your life. <laughs> all right, let's move to the, uh, thank you all, 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 uh, all panelists that uh, contributed on that one. Let's, uh, let's move uh, to the next question. In terms our, of our uh, college experience, uh, and Bob, Bob and Diane, I'm gonna turn back to you too. Uh, what I'd like to uh, ask you is, you know, students are often focused on acquiring technical skills uh, and, 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 they, and they work, but they also work well in teams um, and with other people. Uh, and, and, and working well with teams and other people, of course, is very important. What classroom or co-curricular experiences uh, can you say would have the biggest impact on strengthening a student's soft or essential skills? You know, how, how does a broad understanding of liberal arts or communication skills, et cetera, how does that help? Uh, Bob and Diane. Go ahead, Diane. Thank you, Bob. Um, I think any opportunity you have to work with other people is an amazing experience. You will learn something every time you interact with another human being. And the way we work in corporate America, at least in Northrop Grumman, it is in project teams. 
And so your ability to work well with others, either through your projects in, in school, or um, maybe you join a club or you be a leader in a club. I think my experience as the president of MISA was one of the best things I did when I was on campus. So having any opportunity, whether it's an internship or other collaborative opportunities with industry or with other students will serve you very well. And I think there's a lot of opportunity for that, especially at Cal Poly Pomona. Great, thank you. Thank you, Diane. Bob? Yeah, I just add, I definitely reinforce what Diane said about the, the working world is a collaborative world, highly collaborative, and it's not just collaborative with people you're comfortable with or people who have the same major as you. It's, it's, it's a collaborative with a diversity of people and that's what makes it exciting. Uh, so I think that's a big part of it. Uh, I think uh, um, travel. I know we're a little we're a little constrained right now, but but travel and understanding we live in a global world of different cultures, with different points of view, different ways of doing things. It's very likely that uh, almost any company that we go to work with is going to have a global mindset. Maybe have offices around the world. So the, the more uh, you look outside of the U.S., uh, outside of your your center, uh, the better. I think. I think that's a big a big factor. Um, and then I think having having your passion, you know, where what what are you trying to do, um, including what you want to learn from this company, uh, having that up front. And uh, I at Disney, I always say, uh, don't go out of the house without a pitch. Um, and that, you know, the, there's an elevator, it's called the elevator pitch. And depending on how many floors you go up, you might have to give your personal pitch in 10 seconds. Or if you're going up to a very high building, you might have 20 seconds. But either way, you have to be able to know what is it you're after and what, how do you pitch yourself and, and, and what's the passion you have for the future and be ready to articulate that. Excellent. Thank you, Bob. Any of our other panelists want to chime in on that one before we move to the next one? Yeah, Greg, right. I'd, like, I'd like to make a comment. You know, the, the reality I think is that uh, once we all enter the workspace, um, the majority of us, me certainly, we go to work for one main reason, and that's to, you know, fund our needs, our food, our families, whatever it is. Why we go to work somewhere is what the differentiator is, right? That's where the where the fun comes in. So you heard a lot of great things um, uh, about that and doing things that you enjoy and looking for the right culture and doing the right things. Um, and those are, that's all, I guess, part of the discovery. What I would encourage people to do, um, there's people on here today that probably know um, exactly what they want to do. And that is a blessing. Trust me, if you know where you want to go, congratulations, chase it, run it down and be the best that you can be. Um, but a lot of people don't know what they want to do that are in your situation right now. So when I think of just the different uh, colleges that are in here, the different um, uh, genres that you're going through, you have to cross pollinate. You have to work with other people because that's what you're gonna be doing your entire career. And some of you may be going down this path and may end up down a different path. And it will probably be rooted in communication one way or the other. So I would encourage you to do, get as much experience as you can um, as you work into the, uh, into the, into the post uh, college years. Excellent. Thank you all. Thank you, uh, Brett. Go ahead. I just wanted to add is that please take take full advantage of what the campus is offering in terms of making you an interesting person. I mean, we talked about storytelling and the elevator pitch and you know how you package and how you communicate. And if you don't acquire general information and general knowledge and make yourself interesting. So even if you're a computer science major, do go and take advantage of the poetry class or theater class or, you know, and if you are poetry class, do take advantage of the accounting class because you don't know, you know, you do have to, you do have to do your checkbook, even if you're a, a poet. So do take full advantage of what the campus life is going to offer you in terms of making you an interesting person. So that, that's what I'd like to add. Uh, Julia, uh, Julia, I couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more. I think that companies are looking for breadth, 
You're looking for people with a broad a range of experiences and disciplines, and your opportunity to build that is now. I, the only thing I would add, Clark, and I, I echo everything that's been said here, is if you're sitting in your uh, room or, or and wondering, but I have no idea what my passion is. I'm not quite sure what it is I want to do. How do I go from here to there? I am not doing what I thought I was going to be doing when I was in college. I can tell you that my career has been rewarding every step of the way. Um, and it's been different and varied. And um, when I was going to be a high school teacher, which was the idea I had when I was in college, I probably would not have made the best high school teacher in the world. My husband is a much better high school teacher. But um, by learning some skill sets associated with being a teacher, I have been able to leverage that. So don't, fit, don't think you've got to figure it all out right now because frankly, you don't and you'll have opportunities and don't be afraid to take some risks to think outside of where it is you thought you would be going. Absolutely. Thank you all. Wow, great, great feedback. Great lessons. I hope you guys are taking notes. <laughs> let's uh, let's move to the next question. And Brett, um, we're going to ask you to be our uh, kind of a spokesperson on this one. Um, as students think about their transition from college into a career, you know, if you would please take yourself back to uh, the early days of your career. Um, in fact, you know, I'm reminded that. Uh, there's, there was a, uh, there was a uh, question on a game show recently that said, uh, if you could tell your nine-year-old self uh, what kind of things to think about uh, that will help you get from where, where you are not at nine to where you are now, what would you say? I, I guess I might, might up the age a little bit to, if you could tell your 14-year-old uh, self, you know, now entering high school, uh, what kind of things that you would, or even going into college, what kind of things that you need to know uh, in your early days uh, that can help you guide yourself to your career, to your position, or even just being a better person. Uh, what, what kind of things do you wish you had known then? Uh, and what would you have told yourself and maybe, my, uh, maybe done differently? Brett, this is on you. The first thing I would say is don't do that. <laughs> been the first thing that I would say, right? Um, you know, I took, um, um, I took a different path into my position today. And I think a lot of things that we're all saying, you know, um, I thought I knew what I wanted to do um, uh, in life and completely went a different direction. And um, I fell in love with uh, the culinary arts and things like that before, before it became, I think, what it is today. Um, and I, I traveled down this path and who, know, who knew from... Um, starting kind of as a, as, a, as a chef and in that industry, working into the business sector of that same industry. Um, I think the thing that I've learned the most and the advice that I would give when you think of those transitions is um, just slow down a little bit. I know that I've been guilty of uh, being in a hurry and uh, trying to move forward. And I would say that um, uh, you know, without sounding like I'm patting myself on the back, the the success I've had later in my career was due to the hard work I put in at the beginning of my career, and I didn't rush through um, every step of the way. I know in my mind I was always playing it out and where I wanted to be. I think we all do that. I think that's human nature. Um, but um, I wouldn't have had the success that I had in my business side of my career if I hadn't um, slowed down and learned the things that I needed to do at the beginning of my career. So. As you're, as you're discovering what you want to do, again, some of you know exactly what you want to do, and, and, and that's a blessing. Um, but if you don't, um, use the skills that you're gaining today to go out there, get some experience, just slow down a little bit, and then these comments around having your pitch ready to go, because you never know when that opportunity is going to strike. And uh, um, I'll take something from Julia earlier. Um, uh, you create your own luck, and don't, don't squander that luck. So. Um, that's what I would say, Clark. Thank you, Brett. Anyone else want to chime in before we, we move on? I do. Um, so my nine-year-old self knew exactly what I wanted to do. My intent was to be a forest ranger. 
<laughs> to my freshman year in college and I took my first programming class and then I entirely switched directions. So it's not always the way it may seem now. Um, but one of the best bits of advice I think I ever got was from our CEO who said, always say yes. Um, and what that did for me is recognize that with change comes opportunity. And even though I'm still in the discipline I was in when I graduated from college, I'm still a computer nerd. Um, I've, I've done a million different things. And I've had lots of different experiences over my career by saying yes and opening myself up to new possibilities because you never know what will happen next, what will come about. And as others in the organization see what you can do, um, then you might get tapped for something really cool and fun. So always say yes. Be open-minded to whatever might come about. Excellent. When opportunity comes knocking, be ready. <laughs> All right. We're going to move uh, now into our uh, closing thoughts. And uh, again, this is a question for every, every member of our panel. Um, and then we're going to, after this, we're going to open it up for questions from the uh, students. So uh, I'm going to give you students, this is, this is your... Uh, early warning now. If you have questions, oh, you can, uh, Hel uh, Helen has already sent out the note. Uh, if you have questions, please put them in the chat so that we can address your questions. And, uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preface it by saying the only bad question is the one that wasn't asked. So if you got something on your mind that you really like to have somebody uh, give you some insight on, hey, we got a great panel that can give you insight. Please make sure you put your questions in the chat box. All right. So this is for our entire panel. Uh, if uh, let's see, we've talked through a number of things today. We've talked about, uh, oh wow, uh, communication, innovation. We talked about digital transformation, civic engagement, etc. Uh, we've talked about uh, uh, telling your 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 nine or ten year or thirteen year old self what you would do to make yourself better and move uh, get yourself set up for the career that you eventually ended up in. Um, you know, technical skills versus soft skills. We talked about a lot. What, I, what I'd like to ask each of the panelists to do uh, and try and take, you know, a minute or two to, to address this one. Given our talk about future of work and human and civic engagement, what are perhaps one or two recommendations, one or two specific recommendations that you would give to every student listening today? And I can say that we've heard a lot of good ones so far uh, and we can always go back and hit those uh, if you want to or you could come up with something new. Uh, so I'm gonna, I, actually, I'm gonna call the order on this one if I, if I may. And I'd like to start with Sharon, Sharon Tompkins. Thanks, Mark. Um, I think I, I would start with engage. Um, be willing to engage. If you don't engage, things don't change whether that's in your community, whether that's in your government, whether that's in the company. If you engage, you have the ability to change things. Um, and I think the other thing is engage in a respectful and thoughtful way because people will be able to hear what you're saying if you're thoughtful in how you say it and you're respectful in how you say it. And I really liked Clark earlier today that you know the advice I think a lot of us get when we're younger is to be respectful, to treat others as you would like to be treated. And I think if you engage and you do that, you can make a difference in the world and there's so much that needs to be done, that can be done. And um, you all have the ability to help get it done. So um, just engage and be respectful. Excellent, excellent. Thank you so much, Sharon. Great points. Uh, I'm gonna move over now to uh, Bob, Bob Weiss. Uh, thank you. Um, I, I think I would say, um, uh, Stay in touch, stay in touch with your network. You've met a lot of students, not just the ones in your major, but the ones that you've just met that are in other majors. Um, when, you, when you take your first post-college jobs, 
uh, and you meet people that are interesting and uh, compelling um, or that you get along with or have interesting careers, uh, stay in touch with those. I, I think the broader network you have, and this includes people you know internationally, people you know, you know locally, um, the broader your network is, the, the more effective you can be both in terms of civic engagement, in terms of, of bringing interesting people into your own company, wherever you might uh, be, and, and in other people keeping you abreast of what they're doing and something you might want to do. So uh, you will now, I don't think you'll ever be in a position in, at, like you're in in college where you have such a diversity of people uh, and professions that you're introduced to. Each one of those individuals could be a gateway for you into another another field. So honor those, honor those uh, relationships, value them, and keep track of them. Thank you, Bob. Uh, Julia. Really, the, the kind of like the mantra of 2020 is you're on mute. I, I really <laughs> want to make that t-shirt that says you're on mute. I, I must say that word like 100 times every day, you're on mute. So um, I, I, you know, I, in some ways, I, I can't add to anything more than other panelists are talking about, but do remember that you are accountable. And accountability is going to be very, very important in your life starting from now. So whatever you do, you have to really sometimes step back and see what you're accountable for and really ask that question over and over again. I mean, and, and, and be willing to take risk uh, as long as you, you know that you are accountable for your own future as well. I do think that a lot of times we feel unfairly that your generation is kind of what we call in Asia, a store, strawberry um, generation because it's very easy to bruise, you know? So we kind of feel like you're the generation that needs to be coddled and then we have to really present opportunity on a platter, but, you, you guys are not. You guys are resilient. You guys are strong. And again, be accountable and understand that accountability is going to be very, very important in your life and um, keep on fighting. Excellent. Excellent points. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Brett. Uh, I'll be very succinct right now. Ask questions and actively listen. That's what I would tell you to do is ask questions and actively listen. Um, Knowledge, um, when used appropriately, is very powerful and will create opportunities for you. So much like I said earlier, it is a marathon, uh, not a sprint. Um, confidence is, is, is critical, um, but so is humility. So um, I'm going to lead uh, with ask questions and actively listen. Perfect. Thank you. And last but not least, Diane. I think um, leveraging on what Julia said being accountable, um, I, I would say that you take ownership for what you do and who you are and um, think about the ramifications of the decisions you make and the actions that you take. And um, what we spoke about earlier in our executive session was a lot about ethics and integrity. And whatever you do, um, represent yourself with high integrity and take every opportunity to learn. Um, the last thing I'll leave you with, and this is my cybersecurity background, in a digital world, um, nothing goes away. And so think about the representation you make of yourself um, on the internet, in your digital conversations, your digital relationships, your meetings, and um, make sure that it represents you for the way you want to be represented and for who you truly are. Excellent, excellent points. I really wanna thank the panel for all the feedback that you guys have given, uh, excellent points today. All right, so, so now we have concluded our panel discussion and we'd like to hear from our students. And Dan, I think you are going to help us with that. Yeah, I'm glad to uh, jump in. We're starting to get some good questions now. We've got one that's for Bob Weiss, uh, specifically for sort of his field. So I'll just read that uh, the students, Ralph Martin, 
uh, Agbegnani, uh, sorry, Ralph. I was trying to get that right. He's the past president and founder of Cal Poly Pomona's first ever theme entertainment club. And he's a current leader on the Cal Poly Pomona Rose Float, the award-winning Rose Float. In the uh, last few years of college has dealt with creative and hands-on projects, but those opportunities have become slim in the theme park industry. Uh, and so as he heads it towards graduation, uh, how should he think about that and take advantage of the opportunities have, or where should he go next with those interests? The, uh, the involvement of Cal Poly in the, in the, in the Rose, uh, the annual Rose Bowl float is legendary. <laughs> so many great designers, uh, engineers, folks have come out of that. So that's, that's a plug for Cal Poly and a plug for you too. But, um, you know, COVID may be the worst most of us have seen in our lives, maybe, maybe the worst any of us have seen in our lives. But we're seeing in, um, at, at Disney at least, we're seeing in our parks a uh, immediate uh, desire for people to come back. Uh, I, think, I think the other parks uh, related to us are seeing the same thing. Uh, obviously, we want to do it safely. But we're seeing that people want to go out with their families. They want to do experiences. They want to do learning and educational experiences uh, with, with their friends and families. So I think the fact that you've got a passion for this industry is not at all misplaced. I think uh, we're, we're slowly coming back. And there's always growth opportunities. So wherever you can settle, uh, whether it's as a uh, a freelance uh, artist or designer or engineer or with a small company or you know maybe you 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 land that great piece of luck and you land into a into a larger company um, uh, wherever you start stay with it i think that this is an industry that that sticks together we help each other and and we're going to rebound maybe faster than everybody thinks uh, and somebody mentioned luck i think luck is a is a meeting point of opportunity and preparation. So do the preparation, make sure you have a fantastic portfolio. It doesn't matter what your profession is, have a portfolio, something you can show people, something you can email people that's physical, that's visual, and uh, you'll do well. Well, that's great. That's some very good and direct advice. Uh, uh, Bob had also mentioned a little bit about your network and building your network. And I know that everybody on the panel uh, understands that and they've had mentors and mentees in their career. Uh, and I thought this was a good question. Uh, they recommended staying in touch with people you connect with and what are some strategies to maintain those connections, especially when one feels too busy to keep connections. Is so anybody on the group that has a thought about that? You know, I'll start with something. I'm going to kind of tag into another question that I saw, saw in here too. Um, so life or business is really about um, uh, how well you engage uh, your will and your skill. And, um, you know, nine times out of 10, I'll take somebody with will because um, skills can be taught. That's why we're going to college. That's why we do the things to get the experiences um, that, we, that we do. So um, I, I think it, it as far as the communication piece, if you've got the will to do it, you're going to find a way no matter how busy we are. So um, I liken it to uh, an old saying about painting the Golden Gate Bridge. You start at one end and when you finish, you start all over again. So whatever uh, method you use, maybe in my business, maybe I want to communicate with um, several hundred sales associates, but maybe I want to communicate with all of them. I just have to start somewhere and I have to reach out. Some of us run companies that are far too large to do that, but whatever our network is, um, I think that it's more of a will issue and you will develop your system. And in this digital age, there's a lot of tools to help you do that. If I can jump in on that one also, uh, I'd like to throw out some specific things that I think uh, students can do. Uh, LinkedIn is a, is, a, is a communication device that um, has uh, allowed a lot of professionals to network and, and, and be in constant communication with each other. I often encourage students, uh, if you're not in LinkedIn, you're missing out. Uh, and if you are in LinkedIn, uh, utilize those connections that people have in LinkedIn to, to reach out to others uh, in LinkedIn. 
granted it's a uh, it's, it's not the face-to-face -face, uh you know kind of communication you you normally get uh but in in the virtual world that we're living in right now linkedin is a pretty great uh, good tool i'd also encourage any student out there and i always tell them this when i re uh, review their resumes try to join some professional organizations ieee uh, asme uh, whatever the organization AIA, whatever the organization is because those connections with professionals will help you establish your career and help you establish uh, uh, the contacts that you need uh, in, in some professional areas. So th those are two things that I would offer specifically to students. Uh, Clark, I would add to that, you know, in the, in the, in the park and, and the experiential industry, there's, there's the theme park entertainment association, TEA, TEA, there's IAPA. They all have student groups. I think most of the professional groups have, have student groups. Uh, LinkedIn, I, I'd reinforce that too, uh, Clark. And, and the other thing I would, I would tell all, all students that whether whatever kind of social media you use, um, think of it as going into a crowded, uh, giant public place and saying it out loud because whatever you said five years ago, somebody can find it. So be always serious about what you do with social media and always professional about it because you just never know when it's gonna come back to you. I, Sharon? Only thing that I would add to that question or, is um, it's the authentic touch points in your network and thinking about the relationship building uh, as opposed to how many contacts do I have, I think is particularly important. And when you have those authentic touch points and those authentic communications, and it's amazing that you can find networks in any place um, that you go um, by having some curiosity and conversations. Uh, but it is often those authentic touch points that even if you don't communicate uh, all that frequently, people will remember you. And if you reach out to them, uh, they're likely to respond back. So. And help each other, help each other. Yeah. It's a great opportunity to help each other. Yeah, I'll say that in the chat, our Dean of the College of Business uh, posted a link that there's a uh, actual class, I think in the winter uh, semester, personal branding for career success. So we're pleased to see the college uh, sort of building that out. Uh, there certainly have been a, a big disruption in many industries uh, with COVID. So just in our last couple minutes, uh, we had the question about, you know, is the, are the panelists uh, bullish on a healthy job market in a post-COVID world, and how do their companies intend to invest in future employees uh, in overall growth? And so a little thought about uh, where things are headed in the next couple of years. I can jump in IG market, um, and not just aerospace and defense, which I'm in, but in technology-based businesses in general. Um, I think the outlook is very good because we're developing solutions that help enable other areas of the workforce to expand and grow. Um, and so uh, we're very positive about it. We hired lots of interns this summer, even though they were all virtual. Um, and uh, we're looking to hire thousands more employees um, very soon. Sharon? Yeah, I was just going to say, um, it's a phenomenal time to be in the energy space because we're trying to create a 21st energy system that uh, is lower in carbon and that is affordable and sustainable. And there's a lot of interesting work to make that energy system of the future happen. And um, so, you know, it, it is one of those things that everybody needs to have energy sources. So we're lucky in that we didn't uh, see the same level of impact, but we also recognize that energy has to be affordable because if you can't afford your energy system, you don't have access to your energy system. So um, one of the things we're really um, trying to do is find that, that mix so that people can afford to have the reliable energy um, that is lower in carbon in the future. So yeah, look for those opportunities. And then, uh, you know, Diane's example, look for where other companies will be leveraging uh, those trends into the future. So I'm going to turn it back to uh, Clark to uh, wrap it up and, uh, and close it up for us, Clark. 
Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, wow. You know, we, there were so many other questions. I was looking in the chat. There were so many other questions that didn't get addressed. Uh, maybe at some point in time, we can try and uh, send an email out or something. I don't know what the best way to do it is, but it would be nice to, to try and address everyone's questions. I want to thank uh, all of our industry guests. Uh, really great insights, really great discussions from each of you, Brett Berglund, uh, Julia Huang, Diane Miller, uh, Sharon Tompkins, and Bob Weiss. I, I, great, great panel. Thank you for all for being on this call with us. Um, we greatly appreciate the time and insights that, uh, that were shared today. And of course, thank you to all the students that were on this call. I, got a, I saw some notes from, uh, from some familiar names out there that, uh, that I've seen. Uh, and I just want to say I'm glad to see that you're all still doing, you're still plugging and chugging. Hopefully uh, you got something out of, from, out of uh, today's discussion that will help you. Uh, took some notes that maybe will uh, guide you. And if, we can, uh, if any of us can uh, reach out to you or you want to reach out to us and ask more questions, please feel free to try to do that. Thank you, Dr. Coley. Uh, for being on the call with us today. I know your time is very valuable. Thank you for being on the call with us and allowing us all to be a part of this event and this conversation. It was a lot of fun uh, and I definitely will uh, look forward to seeing everyone uh, that was uh, participating as a panelist as well as uh, the students in the school uh, at some future point in time. Dan, that's all I had. Thanks so much, Clark. We appreciate all your efforts and uh, everybody, I hope you have a great rest of the week. Appreciate it. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. Thanks, Sharon.